Afternoon, everybody. So I have finally finished up the locating video that I've been promising for quite a while. I always get a lot of questions about locating because most of our hunts involve located coyotes. And it took me so long to put all this together because I didn't want to just scratch the surface. I wanted to make sure that I covered it start to finish, top to bottom, and didn't leave anything out, uh, especially for those of you that are brand new to it and need all of this information. So we're going to jump right into it. One thing I do want to mention before I get started is there are some of you that don't locate. You don't need to locate. You've got a high enough cow population or you're satisfied with how many you call, uh, couch you call in versus the, the blind stands that you make. And that's, that's great. And y'all don't talk any crap about people that do locating. Your method works for you and you're fine with other people locating or doing whatever method works for them. However, I am going to touch base and talk about some of the people that don't locate, that talk crap about locating, and I guess just because they don't do it or for whatever reason, they'll talk crap about locating and they'll scare people off of trying locating. And a lot of those people need to be locating because they may be hunting an area that has a sporadic or low coyote population like I do. So, you know, I'm going to touch on some of that stuff that gets said about locating later on. And, you know, for those of you that are not talking crap, this is not directed at you. So if the shoe doesn't fit, don't wear it. But if it does, you know, it is directed at you. So, uh, and, and I'm going to cover that so that you people that are just getting started are not scared and you know the facts about locating instead of just the bull crap that's talked about locating sometimes from people that don't do it. All right, so here we go. And just to show you, none of this is copied and pasted from anywhere. This is stuff that I typed up, you know, and added to. This is, I've been typing this up on and off ever since, you know, about this time last year getting ready to do this video and i think the easiest way to do it without missing anything is for me to just read along i'll put what i'm reading on the screen here beside me so that y'all can read along too if you want to if not you can just listen but i think this is the best way for me to cover everything and not leave anything out i'll just read it off do a little summary as we go and then as always i'm not going to tell you something and then not demonstrate it and show it to you so as soon as i get through all of this it's about an hour until dark right now. We'll go out and we'll apply every bit of this to locating coyotes on some new ground that I want to locate for some upcoming hunts. Uh, it's public ground that I've never stepped foot on. We're going to hit it tonight. We're going to see if it's got any coyotes on it. And I'm going to take you step by step through how I go about locating coyotes and getting a plan to hunt them, form a strategy, all that kind of stuff. So let's jump right into it. Like I said, read along on the screen if you want to. All about locating coyotes. Why do coyotes locate? Coyotes locate for two main reasons. To socialize with known group members, to announce their presence within their territory to neighboring coyote groups or unknown coyotes not part of the resident group. They will announce their presence by howling on their own or to answer other coyotes. They answer our locator howls for the same reason they answer neighboring groups or unknown coyotes. Pretty self-explanatory. So basically, coyotes howl and locate back and forth with each other, either to communicate with family members, socialize, or to answer neighboring coyotes, territorial deal. Um, it's what that pretty much pertains to. All right, moving right along. How do coyotes react to locating? How they react depends on distance. Typically, when we howl, we're far enough away that the resident coyotes will simply howl back to announce their location without advancing towards our position, just like they do neighboring coyotes. The exception is when we're too close for comfort. That's when they will come check out the strange coyote or coyotes they believe to be in their core area. For this reason, as soon as we get a vocal response and mark on their location, move on quickly. This will avoid educating them. So there you go. How coyotes are naturally howling back to our locator house for the same reason they answer other coyotes. Usually when those coyotes howl and answering neighbor coyotes, they're not going back and forth. They're not making contact. They just howl back, announce their presence. They go back to doing whatever they were doing if, you know, you don't move in closer to them. 
Same thing happens when we're locating. They just howl back. If we're far enough away, they don't pay it any attention. They answer, go right back to doing whatever they're doing. If we are really close to them and they start howling, what I always do is jump right back in my truck and take off while they're howling. I let their howling cover the sound of me leaving. And you want to do that because if you're too close for comfort and you're putting pressure on those coyotes with your presence, then they will come check those owls out, out. That's why it works so good. And that's what we're doing when we go back in to hunt. But we don't want to be there, you know, while we're locating. So we want to move on pretty quick when we get a, a response, especially if it's close to us. What's needed for locating? Preferably both an MFK diaphragm howler and a Fox Pro Digital e -call. That's what I use. But you can get by with either one by itself. Hand calls will also work, but I've had a much higher vocal response to diaphragms and e-calls. So, MFK diaphragm howler. This is a Fox Pro X24. That's the call I like. It's the one I use. Great call. A lot of volume. And I also run the diaphragms with an amp horn. I didn't mention that, but I like to run them. You don't have to have it, but it just gives you more volume. You can reach out there. It helps to locate. Those are some things I like to have, uh, and I like to swap back and forth, and we'll get into that here in a minute. How to locate. Drive to the area you plan to locate and pick a starting point. Reset the trip meter on your truck to zero. Get out and start with three or four loan howls on your diaphragm or e-call. If no response after a minute, swap to a pair or group howl. If no response after a minute or two, move on to the next spot. If you get a response, note their location and quickly move on. In open ground, watch your trip meter and move a couple miles between stops. In thick cover, stop approximately every mile. Here's a tip. Swap between the diaphragm and e-call to see if they are answering one better than the other. Also, try different loan howls and group howls on the e-call for the same reason until you find what they like. It's like fishing. Sometimes you need to change baits and colors. So that's what I was touching on a while ago. Those diaphragms, sometimes they're going to be answering the diaphragm howls maybe better than they are the sounds on the e-call and vice versa. Some nights, days, they may be answering the e-call better than they are the diaphragm. So I like to have both. I like to combine both. Same thing with the sounds on the e-calls. You're going to have a variety of lone howls, a variety of pair howls, group howls. You want to swap it up. If you're not getting a response on certain howls, Try something different on the next stop. And when you start getting howls, if they're howling at Lone House, stick with Lone House on the e-call. If it's the diaphragm, the diaphragm. If it's group house you're needing to use, you know, do that. And just change it up until you find what they're biting. And that what works tonight may not be what they're biting on the next night. So just keep that in mind. Run, you know, your, your diaphragms, your e-calls, change your sounds. Find what's making them howl. Um... Let's go on. Locate night versus day. Locating is most productive at night when coyotes are naturally more vocal, although they can be located in daylight, especially during summer pup rearing season. All right, so most of us know coyotes are more vocal at night, typically. They can be located in the daytime during pup rearing time frames, like right now, uh, because the coyotes are really vocal. Those family groups are communicating, so you can locate during the daytime. Uh, but typically, I'm going to do my locating at night, move back in and hunt during the day. If you are locating at night, you're probably going to hunt them right then. Um, so there you go. All right, locating at different times of the year. For fall and winter locating or locating any time outside of the denning and pup rearing season, coyotes should be located as close as possible to when you'll hunt before they move outside of, the, of calling range. For daytime hunting, this would be the last couple hours of darkness before your daylight hunt begins. During denning and pup rearing, locating can be done at any time, and as long as you get a response from multiple coyotes, pairs, or a family group, they can usually be hunted in that area until family bust-up takes place in early fall, as their movements will be limited to denning and pup rearing area. Tip. Response from single coyotes during the denning pup rearing time frame are not reliable because they are likely transient nomadic coyotes with no established territory and not part of a family group. If you do want to hunt them, treat them like you would coyotes at other times of the year and hunt them quick before they move out of the area. 
So basically, any time of the year outside of when they've got pups, you want to locate, if you're day hunting, you want to locate just before daylight, a couple hours just before daylight. That's going to give you an idea of where those coyotes are probably going to bed up for the day. You can move in, get close to those coyotes, up the odds of calling them up. When they do have pups, the pups are the key. The den, the pup rearing area, those coyotes are not moving far because those pups are staying in that small area, basically a core area, almost like a playpen area within their territory. Those adults are staying there because the pups are there. The pups are not moving yet. So you can go out and locate right after dark, hunt the next day, or you can locate tonight and even hunt several days or any time later until family bust up takes place. And those coyotes are going to be typically are going to be right there where you heard them at, especially when you're hearing multiple coyotes, uh, pairs, the family group, etc. Is locating necessary? Kind of touched on that in the intro. The short answer is no, especially in areas with high coyote numbers. But in areas with a low or sporadic coyote population, it can make the difference in calling in coyotes or making numerous blank stands. So like I said, starting out, there are some people that that don't locate and they don't need to. They live in areas with high coyote numbers. They can go out and make blank stands. There's enough coyotes in the area that coyotes are probably listening. They're gonna call coyotes in. They don't have to go out and locate. Nothing wrong with that. That's great if you're set up that way. If you don't have a high, a high coyote population, like where I'm at, I have sporadic coyote numbers. I have little clusters of coyotes. The odds of me making good stands are really increased if I go out and I find those coyotes, I know where they're at. That way, when I make a stand the next morning, I know there are coyotes listening and I'm not just calling and there's nothing there. So depending on where you live, what your coyote population is, you know, locating may be a necessity for you and it may not. All right, this is gonna follow right up with that. Any benefit to locating high population areas? Yes even though it's not a necessity because blind calling can produce often in areas with high count numbers, locating can up your call-in rates even more by showing you exactly where the coyotes are. This ups the odds by giving you a setup advantage, reducing blank stands. So like I just touched on, when you know exactly where those coyotes are, regardless of the coyote population, everything's in your favor. You can put the wind in your favor. You know where to watch for the coyotes. It's just, it's an advantage. Not a necessity, but an advantage, uh, even in those high cow population areas. Locating open versus thick terrain. Locating in open ground is beneficial, but not as crucial as it is in thick terrain because in open ground, good visibility, especially towards the downwind side, gives more room for air with your setup and call position. In thick terrain, locating will allow you to position your setup and call in the best possible place in relation to the wind and coyote's location. This can be critical due to lack of visibility and make the difference in killing or being busted. So kind of like we talked about before, knowing, especially in thick cover, briars and bullshit like I hunt mostly, knowing exactly where those coyotes are really helped me out with my stand set up because it helps me avoid coyotes, you know, coming in the back door, getting my wind, circling, all that kind of stuff. It also helps in open ground, but it's not as critical because in open ground, you can actually use that downwind side to your advantage. You can see farther. And so a lot of times you can get by with more than you can in, in thick cover. Either way, locating can help you out. Um, it's more important in thick cover. Does locating educate coyotes? If done correctly, the effects of locating are minimal, if at all. When done correctly, locating is also the most detailed, least invasive form of scouting you can do because it can and should be done from a distance along roads or trails common to human traffic. It also allows you to cover a lot of ground and do so quickly without actually entering your hunting area. Coyotes naturally and regularly howl back at neighboring coyotes without ever making contact. This is exactly how locating works. If you, locating your, if you locate your hunting area from a distance and leave as soon as you hear a response, there's no reason for the local coyotes to ever associate anything negative with the howls they heard. It's just an unknown coyote. Even if they do check out the spot you located from after you're gone and smell where you stood, there's no reason for them to associate the howls they heard 
with your scent as long as you locate from spots common to human traffic. What will educate them is locating your areas too often, howling at them repeatedly over and over again, or hanging around after you locate and get busted. Also, don't walk into your areas to locate. This would be pressure and educate similar to making blind or blank stands. All right, so that's, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot I need to summarize there. Basically, when you're doing your locating, locate, hear your coyotes, move on, and do so from a road or somewhere common to, you know, foot traffic, cars, etc., so that you're not educating those coyotes. Locating versus looking for sign. Locating is more detailed and gives the coyotes exact current location. Finding fresh sign is great and helps if making blind stands, but it only provides you with an indication of areas coyotes are passing through and that they may or may not be in at the time. I use areas with fresh sign as good areas to locate. Self-explanatory again, you know, if you're seeing tracks and coyote shit, it's a good spot and it's fresh, you know, you know there are coyotes there, you can probably get by with going in and making blind stands, but locating will give you real time, the most recent information possible and show you exactly where those coyotes are at. Uh, you know, they could, they could leave tracks in the road here and shit over there and be a mile away in, you know, 30 minutes. Locating will show you exactly where those coyotes are at. Advantages of locating. Better approach in relation to where the coyotes are. Better setups by getting closer with the wind in your favor. Better idea of where to watch for coyotes to approach and how to set up for the shot. Confidence in your stand knowing coyotes are nearby and listening. Less blank stands by not wasting time on blind stand in areas coyotes aren't. More productive kill rates by making every stand close to where coyotes currently are. All of that's self-explanatory, so we're going to move right on. Disadvantages of locating. Takes a lot of extra time and effort. Cuts into your sleep. Requires a lot of ground to find vocal groups. Adds expense. I usually burn at least a half tank of gas each night. Gas prices like they are right now, that's a big disadvantage. Um, moving right along, and this is going to touch on, this next section is going to touch on those people that talk crap about locating. And uh, so this, this is probably going to offend some of those people. This is not directed at the people that, don't need to locate and don't talk crap about other people's methods. But the reason I'm going to cover this is because those people that do talk crap, they will scare somebody that new that needs to locate because they have a locale population in particular. They'll scare them off of going out and locating them. They'll make them think it's a waste of time or that they're educating cows. So um, let's get to it. Lies, BS, myths, and misconceptions. Locating educates cows, just blind call. This is one of the most common misconceptions about locating. I even hear well-known cow hunters say it. Not only is it complete BS, it immediately shows lack of locating hunting experience, especially in areas with low cow populations where locating is almost a necessity. It also shows lack of basic cow behavior knowledge as to why cows locate and how they react to it for the reasons already mentioned above. Furthermore, common sense should tell anyone that walking in, leaving a scent trail, making noise, and running through multiple sounds while making a while making multiple blind stands is much more invasive pressure and prone to educate than locating at a few spots from a distance around your hunting area would be, especially since a high percentage of blind stands are blanks. So all of that, I mean, we've pretty well covered all of that already, but it's just I mean, it's common sense that if you're locating from a distance and those coyotes naturally howl at other coyotes and they're naturally howling back when you locate them and you're just doing it from a road and moving on, you're not going to educate the coyotes. And it's, it's obviously better than walking into your area and making a bunch of blind stands at coyotes coming in, busting you because the wind's wrong, coming in, smelling where you were at, all that kind of stuff. Locating is a waste of time. More bad information put out by people that haven't figured out how to use locating to their advantage or feel they need justification for why they don't do it when the locating topic is brought up, so they try to discredit it instead. Without question, locating drastically increases the call-up rates per stands made and why it's used so effectively by MFK customers nationwide to kill massive piles of cows annually 
as well as win numerous high-profile contests each year while setting records doing so. On top of that, I personally kill 99% of my coyotes at close range with shotgun or bow. Locating is a, big, is a big key to all the success mentioned and definitely worth the time. Again, self-explanatory, I'm going to move right on. Tracks and scatter, better information than locating. Another misconception that gets thrown around. While fresh sign is good information and shows that coyotes have been in the area recently, nothing beats knowing the coyotes' exact current location, either from sightings or locating. That's kind of just following up what we talked about a little bit ago. Cows that howl back won't come in. <laughs> I see this on social media often and have heard it on, discussed on podcasts. This simply shows lack of experience dealing with vocal cows and the knowledge that distance from the cows is the key role in calling them in. If you're not close enough to be a threat, they'll just hold their ground, cuss you out from a distance or from cover and won't come in. This distance can be very short at times depending on their mood or boundaries. This makes moving close makes moving closer extremely effective. Locating and knowing their exact position helps with this tremendously. So basically a lot of these people, I've heard some some fairly well-known hunters say that when coyotes howl at you, it's an indication that you're not going to call them up. That's that's bull crap. And they always end up saying the same thing. They're not moving on those coyotes. When you have coyotes howl back, it's like I said, they, they locate for that reason. And usually they don't come to you if you are not a threat from the distance that you're calling from. So the way to go about killing those vocal coyotes is to move towards them. When you move in, that's pressure on those coyotes. You set up and howl again. And when you get too close, too close for comfort, like we talked about earlier, that's when those coyotes will run you over. So when you hear coyotes howl, if there's a good bit of distance between you, and sometimes it doesn't have to be very far, but if they don't come in pretty quick, move closer to them. However close you can get, move closer. You'll kill those coyotes more often than not. Locating and howling scares submissive young coyotes. This is the number one BS claim of all. It's been written and said for years and continues to be rewritten and repeated today. Again, lack of coyote behavior knowledge and assumptions based on human thinking is the reason. When pups are little, not only are they not scared of howling, it excites them. Howling means social interaction and food. It's all they know until months later when they start catching prey on their own. Howling will call them in faster than any other sound. Also, older submissive or subordinate coyotes are not scared of strange howls or interaction with strange coyotes. They are only scared and submissive to known coyotes that have already established dominance and higher rank over them in the pecking order. How do you think dispersed, lone, or transient coyotes ever find a mate and establish a territory of their own if they're scared of all other coyotes and their howls? Think of it like this. We've all seen the little dogs that have been whooped by all his bigger yard buddies. He tucks tail and submits when they come around, yet he will still jump on a stray like he's the champ. Subordinate coyotes react the same way to strange coyotes and strange howls. So, after raising coyotes, getting them to, you know, to watch them at close range, interact naturally, I learned all about what I just read about. For one, coyotes recognize each other's howls, so they know if it's a strange coyote howl or if it's a known coyote howl, a family member, etc., a local coyote. In those local family groups, those coyotes have a pecking order. There are submissive and subordinate coyotes, and when one of them howls, the other one's may submit or be scared of those coyotes that have already established rank above them and are lower on the pecking order. But that's not what we're dealing with when we're howling because we're a strange coyote. When they hear us howl, they recognize it as a strange coyote. Even the most submissive coyote in the bunch is not scared of those strange howls because he doesn't know that coyote and he's still there's still rank and pecking order to be established. That's how these transient coyotes go about finding a place to live and pairing up and all of that. They, they whoop another coyote somewhere else that has not whooped them. And the same thing with pups. Everybody thinks that pups are coming in to prey distress. When pups are little, they don't know anything about prey distress. Prey distress typically scares them. If you are calling them in when they're really little, it's out of curiosity. They just they don't know what it is and they may poke their head out and come see what it is. Howls, on the other hand, is what they do know and they will run right over the top of howls. You can get close to a, 
batch of eight week, eight week old pups and run a dominant male howl and those pups will run right over the top of you. There is no better sound for calling little pups than howls. Not that you're trying to, to call little pups, but just to drive the, the point home, howls are not scaring are not scaring pup coyotes and submissive coyotes because they are strange howls. I really want to drive that that point home. Probably the biggest thing I've learned after raising and watching so many coyotes and then going out and hunting them and seeing it happen over and over and over again, calling in these, you know, these younger coyotes with, you know, aggressive male type vocals. They'll run right over the top of it. Bottom line, don't believe the lies. Take the time to locate, do it correctly, and you will see increased success and fewer blank stands. All right, so there it is. So we got through probably the boring stuff reading all this, but like I said, I felt like it was necessary to cover all of that. If there's anything I missed or something that y'all have questions about, just leave me a comment at the end of the video and I'll get on there and answer all that, fill in any blanks. I don't think I missed much, but if I did and you have a question, I always appreciate hearing from you. I get on there and answer that stuff. Now, like I said, we're fixing to go and we're going to put all of this to work. We're going to take these diaphragms and this, this call. We're going to set the trip meter. I'm going to show you start to finish how I go about locating new ground or old ground. Uh, I do the same process every year when I start stacking up coats. And I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to use Onyx Maps. We're going to mark these coats and I'll show you exactly how it works and uh, how I go about doing it start to finish. So uh, y'all come with me and we'll be in the truck locating coyotes here shortly. All right, we're just now pulling up over here to this public ground. And like I told you, I wanna show you before I get out of the truck, I've set this trip meter to zero. I think y'all can see that so I always set it to zero get out and start and as soon as I pull up here as soon as I cut the truck off which we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna pull over on the side right here and as soon as I cut the truck off I jump out and go to howling uh, you don't have to wait around I get a lot of questions do you wait after you stop the truck if you want to you can but I don't I just pull up stop and uh, start locating. I'm gonna swap cameras to get the infrared. There's still a little light in the sky, but this GoPro is not gonna pick it up. So I'll swap over to the infrared on the big camera and uh, we'll see if we can locate something here at this first spot. All right, here we go. First stop. There they go. Camera's having trouble in this. Couch are howling right in there off of those cow pastures that I talked about seeing on the map. Took them a second to get cranked up, but... I can actually hear another group in there a lot deeper. Y'all probably can't hear them. That 
one group's on on public for sure. The other group, I'll have to look on the map. They're gonna be on the other side of those big cow pastures, but there is some chopped up public over there too. Like I said, first time out here on this, so I don't have a good feel for it yet. But we know there's one group of cows, very first stop, lawn house on the diaphragms. Now I was just fixing to go to some group pals on the e-call and they started howling. So give you an idea about how to go about it. If they don't answer those lawn howls, go to the group owls. Mix the diaphragms, mix the e-call, find out what they're howling on. At this next stop, I'm gonna go to the e-call first because like I said, it took those a second or two before they got fired up. All right, we've been just over a mile uh, from that first stop. This will be the second stop. I'm gonna start with the e-call this time and run whimper howls to start out with. If nothing answers, I'll go to a group owl. Fifth stop. Didn't hear anything on the second, third, or fourth stops. Heard two groups on the first stop. Nothing here. Alright, stop number six. Start with some lone howls on the call. All right, I forgot to show y'all this on the first stop. And I hope y'all can hear those. All these bugs probably making it hard. But I forgot to show y'all in the first spot. I knew exactly where they were at off the back of that cow pasture. But what I do once I hear them is I get out my maps. I'm using Onyx. Y'all can use whichever ones you like. But I'll get out and check my map and mark those goats. <laughs> Running these lights, the bugs are usually not this bad locating, but having this light on so that y'all can see me is making it rough. But those goats are straight across. They're probably about 600 yards deep, six to 700 yards. <coughs> I'm gonna mark them at 600. I'd, I'd rather undershoot them than overshoot them. Cause that'll get us in the ballpark when we go back in there to hunt. But anyway, I get my map out, get my coach marked, and then move on to the next spot. Now, if they howl really close, like I said, <coughs> before we got out here locating, if they howl really close right on top of us, I'll get that mark after I get down the road a little ways, uh, just to move on. While well, I'm sucking bugs down my throat, up my nose, in my eyes, we're going to move on to the next spot. All right, I think this is stop number 13 or 14. This is the last stop on this public ground. I am right on the public ground, private ground line. And it's a good looking spot because this is all this private ground that butts up to the public. It's kind of like the first stop that we made on the other end of this public. It's all farm ground, cow pastures, chicken houses, all that kind of stuff. But all the woods that are butted up to these pastures are on public. So the cow should be on public, especially, you know, come daylight. So I got high hopes for this spot. 
it's probably be the last, well it will be the last spot that we check. It's a smack lone house. They seem like they've been liking them lone house. Pretty good. Split groups. Normally I would jump in the truck and take off right here because we're pretty close to both groups. Got a group on each side. Each strip of timber that's running beside these uh, private ground fields. Normally I would jump in the truck and take off because of how close I am to them. But for the sake of showing y'all how to how I do this. I mean they're just right here, they're about maybe 150, 200 yards from us, maybe. I can hear these, there's some pups in this group down here. I can hear them kind of fighting. Alright, let's get out of here pretty quick because these couch probably come check us out. Alright, so that ended up being worth the drive. I just pulled away from those last two groups that we heard. I've already got them marked on the map. But just to summarize, I think we heard, if I'm not mistaken, I made 13 stops, heard six groups, got a really good pin on five of those six groups. But I hope that that showed y'all and give you a pretty good idea of how I go about doing this. You know, pull up to your first spot, set your trip meter to zero, jump out and howl. You don't have to wait. As soon as I kill the truck, I jump out and I go right to uh, a lone howl or a group howl, either on the diaphragm, on the e-call. If I don't get a response, I move about a mile in thick terrain. If it's open ground, I'll move two miles or so and then hop out and do it again. Once I get a response, I grab my map, immediately mark those coyotes, and then go on to the next spot quick like. Uh, just go ahead and get out of there. Uh, now that we've got those coyotes marked, when I get ready to go back and hunt, probably in the morning, we'll go right back in there. Of course, I'll carry y'all with me. We'll go right back in there, start setting up on some of these coyotes, and see if we can get them killed. And what you want to do is move right in there pretty close to those pins that you mark, get the wind right, Get in there, set up. I always start with my howls. A lot of times those coyotes will vocalize and relocate. If they have moved a little bit off your pin or if your pin wasn't that accurate, then you can always readjust, make a move on those coyotes, get set up again with the wind right. And most of those coyotes are pretty high odds and you can kill a lot of them when you've got coyotes located and you put everything in your favor. So that's how I go about doing it. Hope that helped you out. If any of you have questions about it, like I said earlier, just leave me a comment. I always get on there and answer that stuff. And we'll go see if we can kill some of those coyotes probably in the morning. See y'all then. Appreciate you watching. Located coyotes out here in this field edge last night. Got a narrow strip of hardwood timber between the field edge and a big grown up thicket, monster thicket. Just to cut right to it. We located these cows, we're hunting public ground, and we located these cows, like I said, off of Blacktop Road out here.